Welcome back to another episode of Program That Part. Today we are going to program this guy right here. And this is an oil filter adapter for a Ford 460, uh, Ford 302 engine. Looks something like this right here where this side, the big side fits in the engine and this smaller side fits in the oil filter. Like that. That's the oil filter right there. So this thing gets threaded. And the top thread is 1 and a 16th of an inch by... 12 threads per inch and this bottom side right here is 3 quarter inch 16 so 16 threads per inch so anyway let's start with setup 1 so this is our stock right here and we are going to be milling this I don't have a lathe or at least when I made this part I didn't have a lathe and I have two setups here so here is my origin right in the middle of the stock the stock is a fixed size cylinder 1 and a quarter inch in diameter and one and a half inches long and I have the part setting right in the middle of that stock so first thing we're going to face everything off and this is a piece of 1018 steel and this is the first time I ever made anything from 1018 steel so I used a quarter inch flat end mill at 5500 rpm 35 inches a minute to face this top part off I just selected anywhere on the part and the model top is my bottom height so it already knows just to mill down to that model top my extension here so it extends on the horizontal sides and I also have a stock offset of a quarter inch and this is it offsets everything a quarter of an inch longer on all sides and the step over is 0.1 inches next up we're going to adaptive this middle out as long as we could go with the quarter inch flat end mill quarter inch flat end mill 4500 rpm at 40 inches a minute I selected this bottom contour here now we won't go that deep, but we'll go as deep as we can. So the top height is this face here, and the bottom height is this fit is this face plus 0.6 inches. So we selected this part right here and added 0.6 inches from that, and that is our bottom height. So our optimal load in this 2D adaptive is 15 thousandths of an inch, and I'm going at a quarter inch step downs each time each pass. So each depth is going to be a quarter of an inch and stock to leave is zero. Everything else is left the same. And then I'm going to contour out the outside here. And with that quarter inch flat end mill, 4500 RPM at 35 inches a minute, we're going to select this part right here and just mill that out. And I have this little step right here because this is basically where it's the threading stops. So that's why I have that little step right there. And I just selected this top face as the top height. And the bottom height is the selected contour that I selected. So everything is default up here. And the roughing passes is what I changed. So I'm stepping over 20 thousandths of an inch each pass. And I'm going a number of five step overs. So that's sort of where we get our tool path. I'll show in a second. And each pass is taking off 0.2 inches and everything on this tab is left the same so this is what we end up with and here is our five passes you can see each little line that's five passes at 20,000 step over and each one is 0.2 inches deep to finish up is almost the same exact thing I'm going to select this contour instead now almost the exact same thing as the other 2D contour we just did quarter inch flat end mill at 4500 rpm 35 inches a minute I selected this contour right here. For the top height, I selected this little stepped part right here. And that is just so we don't start from feeding from way up here, because that's really annoying. So everything is default up here. Almost the same thing. Uh, step over at 15 thousandths of an inch, and eight, and a total of eight step overs. And multiple depths, I have selected eighth of an inch each pass. And everything is default up here. And I have roughing passes selected like we did before, except we, we're going 15 thousandths of an inch this time with a number of eight step overs. So that's where we get our eight step overs here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a finishing pass. And then we're going to go ahead and clean up the outside part with our 90 degree spot drill, 8,000 RPM at 20 inches a minute. We select this chain right here leave everything here the same and the chamfer width is going to be 12 thousandths chamfer chamfer tip offset is 40 thousandths and chamfer clearance is 25 thousandths 
and everything here is the same. And that's where we get that toolpath right there. And next up is the threading. And this can be kind of crazy. I have a big thread mill here, 3 8 inch cutting diameter, and this is a single point thread mill. And it looks something similar to that right there. So 8,000 RPM and 30 inches a minute, I'm going to cut this thing. And I selected this outside face here, this circular face. Left everything here the same. And my thread pitch. So to get this thread pitch, it's I'm going 12 threads per inch. So in order to get that pitch, you go 1 divided by 12. And that will get you the 83 thousandths. And pitch diameter offset. So that is the outside diameter minus the minor diameter. And this is something you sort of have to play with to get correct. I mean, I went a little bit more than it should have been here, and that was just to get the correct depth of the thread. And that's sort of what I came up with there. And to help with that, you can just Google major and minor diameters of standard threading, and you'll find something like that, and you, that helps out immensely. So we're only doing one step over here, just one pass, and it should cut everything like it should. So that is what we come up with. And then I used the same thread mill to chamfer this outside again. So I didn't really need this chamfer back here since I was going to do it again. And this, this using the thread mill to chamfer just helps out a lot because it has a 60 degree angle and it just helps uh, screw in the threads just a little bit easier. So you kind of have to trick Fusion to make sure you can chamfer with this thread mill because it thinks it thinks you're using a thread mill won't allow you to do it so you had to go in and use change it to a chamfer tool and make this a basically a chamfer tool rather than a thread mill even though it's the same tool and I had to use a contour instead of a chamfer pass just to further even trick fusion to letting me do this so at 5000 rpm and this should be 35 inches a minute I selected this chain again here for the contour and bottom height I selected this face minus 30 thousandths from that face there and I selected chamfer but I didn't really need to just because this bottom height this is something you had to play with this bottom height height here just is what made the made it work instead of using this chamfer option here and then lastly we are going to bring in the quarter inch radius mill this thing was crazy to bring in here for this so I've used this tool for a lot of aluminum but not for steel so put the tool in 5500 rpm at 8 inches a minute so not very fast at all and I believe I had to mess with that a little bit just so I didn't crash anything <laughs> so I modeled this fillet into the part and I selected this contour right here just so I could get a base line to put the radius mill into. For the top height I selected this face here and I wanted from from my selected contours which is this chain right here I went negative 0.12 inches and that is something else I had to mess with to get this looking correct or else the radius tool will end up too high and you won't get the correct radius or the radius that I would have liked to so that's what I ended up doing and I have a bunch of roughing, roughing passes so at 0 0.01 inches, 10 thousandths of an inch I'm stepping over three times at 0 0.1 inches depth of cut each time and everything here is left the same so that gives us something looking like this for the second setup it's a little bit easier here so we're just going to flip this part over and put it in sort of a V block and a vise and do this side now so we're going to face this off like normal like we did before and then we're going to adapt I won't go over that since it's almost the same as this one and then we're going to adaptive out all this the rest of this here in order to do that I knew I went 0 0.6 inches up from here last time when we did it from this side so now I need to go down something similar to that so with the quarter inch flat end mill 4500 rpm 35 inches a minute I selected this face right here and we are going negative 0.6 inches now so exactly what it was before probably should have went a little bit more than that but that's okay each depth of cut is 0.18 inches and stock to leave is nothing 
and optimal load is 15 thousandths of an inch. And then we are going to do this crazy contour right here. And like I said, this was the first time I was milling steel, so I was very conservative with my cutting here. So quarter inch flat end mill, 4500 RPM, 35 inches a minute. I selected this chain right here. And top height here is the only thing I changed, and that's so we don't have to feed down from the height of the stock, and that's just annoying. So, with roughing passes, I am stepping over 15 thousandths each time, 21 total step overs. And there's probably a finishing pass in there somewhere as well. And each depth of cut is 0.15 inches. So, this is kind of crazy that 21 step overs there, and that's just, I got the 21. So I would step up, step over into the part, into the stock at 15 thousandths rather than plunging in. So that's how I got this path right here. So there should be 22 or 21 lines with a finishing pass, I believe. So that's took a while to mill out, and that would really help if I had a lathe at this time. But oh well. So then we're coming in with a chamfer on the inside here. And to do that it was exactly the same as last time except this is an internal chamfer here. 8000 RPM at 30 inches a minute. Selected this chain here. Uh, kept that the same. And the chamfer width is going to be 30 thousandths of an inch. And these two are default. And the rest is default as well. And then threading. And I took two passes here for some reason. I have no idea why. So with the same 3 8 of an inch cutting diameter thread mill, 8,000 RPM at 40 inches a minute, I selected this circular face here. And Fusion thinks the whole bottom is the bottom of this out shaft outside here. So I want to go 50 thousandths up from the whole bottom so just so I don't hit this part right here. So the thread pitch, I got that from doing 1 divided by 16, which gave me this, 0 0.0625 and mess with the pitch diameter offset which I said before is the major diameter minus the minor diameter and that's something else I had to play around with too just to get the correct depth of the thread. So with two step overs I'm stepping over 20 thousandths each time. Didn't really need to do that but I wanted to be a little bit conservative I guess. So then doing the same thing before with the same thread mill I wanted to do this contour to chamfer this top side here with that 60 degree it's basically a 60 degree chamfer tool. So 5,000 RPM at 35 inches a minute. <laughs> 3 eighths of an inch chamfer mill, basically. I selected this chain here. And the top height is this top face here. And the bottom height is negative 30 thousandths from this face right here as well. And then we didn't have to mess with this chamfer option here that just helps out a little bit just that just I don't know I don't know what the deal is with this chamfer option but it just I just found it a lot easier to go uh, negative from from the bottom height here from the original I guess cutting face so it thinks this is the bottom height but I need to go a little bit deeper than that to get the correct chamfer and that's just something I had to play around with to get it correct and you can play around with that a little bit uh, and do the simulation just to make sure it looks correct. And everything else here and here is default. So let's take a look after we simulate this. So we're facing this off here, boring out the middle, cutting the outside to size, and then we're thread milling. And that's what she looks like. And for some reason when I do this uh, radius tool right here, it thinks that I'm cutting into the top, but I'm really not. As you can see here, it thinks I'm cutting into the top for some reason, but I'm really not. Yeah, like this right there. I'm not even close to it, so I don't know why it's, it freaks out and thinks that I gouged the metal, the material right here, but I really didn't. And then you won't be able to see that chamfer too on that top side because it took away that material for me. So. We'll flip, flip over and do the second operation here. And this is what I was talking about on the chamfer. 
So it comes in, and I'm just negative, just negative 30 thousandths, and that gives me, well, there we go. That gives me a good enough chamfer, just a nice lead in to thread into the oil filter, basically. So that right there is it. Pretty cool how it turned out, and it turned out really good. I have it on my engine right now, and it works good. So if you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.